What's up everybody? Welcome to the Daily Dahlia. I'm Dahlia and today we're in the kitchen. So today I'm going to make mini meatloaf pepper rings. Okay. Now it's like stuffed peppers, but in pepper slices and they're like meatloaves. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I've never made anything like this before. And this is a recipe I found on Pinterest on diary of rest of a recipe collector.com. So hopefully it'll be interesting and hopefully um, I can make this video interesting and you won't be bored. Hello, let me stay in, in care of you here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the ingredients. First things first, four large bell peppers, red, yellow, or orange. So let's get those out of the fridge. Now let's see, I got one orange, one red, one orange more, and one yellow. So I got a nice variety there. Next ingredient is two pounds of lean ground beef, which I took out yesterday. So I'm hoping they'll be nice and defrosted, which they are. Hooray. Okay. Also, by the way, sorry for the state of my kitchen. It's, you know, I don't like to clean. And I got other more interesting things to do, like watch ghost hunting shows. So I don't clean the kitchen that often, but I do wipe it down every time I use it. But why would I clean it before I use it? You know what I'm saying? Ridiculous. Anyway, um, all right, so I need a table and a half teaspoon of Creole seasoning. Old Bay seasoning. Next, um, Italian breadcrumbs, egg, and shredded parmesan. I don't know, I got two bags though. So, I apologize in advance if I do something like super gross because I don't, I don't know, like some people have different standards of hygiene when they're cooking. My standards happen to be maybe a little bit lower than everyone else's, but I do try to be somewhat sanitary. So don't at me with your, I don't know, criticisms. Or maybe if you have something to suggest and suggest it politely and don't be mean because I'll cry and, and you don't want me to cry. All right, so what's next? I got parmesan, I need crushed red pepper, three cloves of garlic, olive oil, chopped parsley, Italian cheese blend, and crushed tomatoes. So I got my crushed tomatoes. I got my little bitty garlics that are like organic because that's all they had for the grocery pickup when I did garlic pickup, or grocery pickup with garlic like two months ago, a month ago, within a month ago. That's how long we've been in quarantine, right? Just about, maybe more. I don't know. Anyway, this is what I have for garlic. They're little itty bitty ones, so I might double how many cloves I'm supposed to use. Um, okay, Italian cheese blend. I also couldn't find that at the grocery store the other day, so we'll make do with just this mozzarella and Parmesan combination. And parsley. I hate using parsley. Also, my local grocery store doesn't have flat leaf parsley. It only has the really coarse kind that's like kind of a garnish that nobody wants to eat, so... I'm not gonna bother with that because I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's just a garnish, so I'm not gonna bother with that. All right, so let us go ahead and get started. I'm gonna wash my hands before I forget. Prepare peppers by slicing off a little bit off the top and bottom of each pepper. Do not discard these. Cut out ribs and seeds. Slice into three, three thick rings. Good gracious, there's recipes full of tongue twisters. Um, place on a sheet pan lined with parchment for easy cleanup. Dice up remaining parts of peppers to use in meat, meat mixture. Okay. Yeah. Then let me get on my handy dandy. There's my apron. See that? 
my Tronus is a pizza. How about that? This is a gift for my very smart husband, and I love it, and I wear it every time I cook because I tend to make a big mess. Okay, so we're gonna start by slicing up the peppers. Let's rinse them off. This one's looking ever so slightly wrinkled. I don't know if I'm gonna get three sections out of this one because it's kind of small. Excuse me, sticker, can you please get off? Oh my god, I'm attacked. Okay, rinse. Let's see the other ones while I'm at it. I hate wasting all this paper. I need to get some of those reusable bags. The problem is I'm doing grocery pickups, so I can't use them, which makes me kind of sad. Oopsie. But what can you do? It looks that bad. This one I could get three at, at least, maybe even four. Look at that, it's a big giant one. Okay. Rinse these guys off. Try my hands. For some reason, I hate having my hands wet. Is that weird? Like, I don't know. Even after I brush my teeth, like, I feel like I always have to wipe my hand, like, immediately. It's really weird. Okay, so cut off the tops and the bottoms. Then cut out the ribs and seeds, slice into three thick rings. So, like, judging by the pictures, they're pretty thick. Oh no, they're stacked. Are they? Why? But like, look, they're pretty thick. So, I don't know if I'm gonna get three out of all of these, but that's perfectly fine. Let me see what the rest of the ingredients are, because, I mean, rest the directions are. Okay. You sear it first. Hello, I might have to like change this arrangement, I don't know. You sear it first, and then it goes in the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep the oven for 350 degrees because the worst thing is like waiting for the oven to warm up. It just takes forever. So go ahead and take out the seeds. This piece is not so big. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it in half. Okay, good. And I'll go ahead and stack those. Maybe fit three in a row on that one. This little guy is a bitty boy. Take I won't eat this. I'm gonna eat it. Mmm. Y'all. If you have never eaten a raw orange or yellow pepper, you're missing out because that is some good ish. Okay. In there, one more in there. Then we'll go ahead and hit up. Oh, no, no, no. That's good. I cannot begin to tell you how important it is to have a giant trash can when you're cooking because you just make so much trash. Now, these are kind of funky size. Like this one is itty bitty like that. I don't know how much meatloaf quote unquote you're gonna be fitting there, but we'll try. But if <laughs> oh yeah, going back to like my sanitary habits. Also, my cooking might be weird. I don't know. I was never taught like, well, I don't know. I never really know like the basics of cooking, so if I cut things weird and it looks like I'm gonna chop my finger off, I apologize. I don't usually chop my finger off. I still have them all, see? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So I haven't died yet. But we'll see. Oh, perfect. Fits perfectly on the pan. Do you guys see that? Ta da! Now it says dice up remaining parts of peppers to use in a meat mixture. So, I mean, if it's going into like a meat loaf, I'm assuming it's going to be really tiny. So, I'm going to go ahead and get a bowl to get started with that. Um, oh, yeah. 
Another thing about me cooking, I'm a super duper noisy cook. My husband gets mad like all the time. So just bear with me with all the noise. Maybe I can like do some magical editing or something or other to like get all the noise out of there. I don't know. Anyway, I'm dice this kind of fine. These are probably not even really small enough, but I'm too lazy. I hate cutting vegetables, you guys. It's like my least favorite thing to do. As for example, this recipe says, you know, they usually say how long it takes. So this one doesn't say. It's like eight minute prep time, 20 minute cook time. I know, it never takes that little amount of time. Like I usually have to double at least the cook time and the prep time because I'm not that fast of a cook. <sighs> yeah, this is my least favorite part about cooking. I kind of hate chopping stuff. But this is the way it ends. To be honest, I'll probably skip over all this stuff. Oh yeah, another thing about my cooking. I am super messy. And I make big mess every time. I use like a thousand utensils and a thousand different bowls and pans and plates and whatever. So what reminded me is that as I was digging the seeds out of this pepper, I dropped some on the floor, which is absolutely inevitable so don't judge and if you're a messy cook too then we thrive in solidarity don't we almost there with the chopping i to chop onions for this no i didn't bring any onions out i hate cutting onions y'all if i have to cook onions i will cry and it's not because i'm like sad for the onions it's just they always affect me and make my eyes burn like crazy so i am glad that for our first cooking adventure together, I do not have to cut onions. Okay. And scoop all that into the bowl. I diced those fine enough, but who knows? All right, what's next? Prepare meat loaf mix. Mix ground beef with seasoning, breadcrumbs, egg, parmesan, red pepper flakes, garlic, and remaining diced peppers until combined. All right, getting our hands dirty, it looks like. And a half. Interesting, it combines Creole seasoning with Italian mix. Quarter cup of shredded parmesan. Probably could use like a measuring cup for this. Oh, no, I know that's a bad habit I have too. But I'm too lazy. I don't want to get something out and have to clean it. Okay, I'll just kind of break this up a little bit. Pinch of red pepper flakes. Some people like it more spicy than others, but I do not like it that spicy, so a pinch is enough for me. Three cloves of garlic, finely chopped. Like, look at these little tiny garlic cloves. Like, they're so little. I have to get 
bigger ones next time I get garlic. But for now, I use these. These are a little bit bigger. So, go ahead. Take some more. Does anyone else have weak thumbs? I'm just a mess. And the oven is ready. Let's just add two more because I like garlic. And, you know, three cloves of garlic is what I'm going to do. Nothing. Seriously, this is my least favorite thing about chopping garlic, but there are a lot of things that I do not like about chopping garlic, to be completely frank. Especially hate these little big ones. They're always the hardest to peel for whatever reason, even though they're the smallest. My method of mincing or finely chopping garlic, is that what it says? Yeah. Is to just cut it into slices in one way, and then cut it into slices another way. And then do that with every piece, every clove, I guess you should say. I seriously hate cutting garlic, you guys. And this is a beauty piece. Oh my god, I can't even hold it down, it's so small. Just leave that one one way. Other little beauty piece. Okay. And now once I've done that, I do what I do with the garlic and I just chop. I mean, some people like using a garlic press, but like I've never really had success using a garlic press. I don't know why. It's like it I wasn't a bending the garlic press. Am I doing it wrong? I don't know. Somebody tell me. Anyway, chop, chop, chop. Cut nut this garlic. Some people grate their garlic too, but like, aren't you afraid you're gonna like slice up your fingers? Like, teach me your magic. Okay, I think we're good. I also need better cutting boards. Like, I got these at the dollar store when I was living in Japan, so. They slip and slide around all over the place and not really slip and when they get wet they slide really easily so probably need to get better ones but I'm cheap so maybe not. Okay so we put in everything but the ground beef so let's go ahead and get that in there. When you're a chef, you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, <laughs> oh it feels so gross, you guys. It is real nasty, and there's raw egg in there too. This is the struggle, isn't it? Oh no. Excuse me, sir. Okay. Yeah, I definitely did not dice those pepper spine enough, but what can you do when you're lazy like I am? Oh. Okay, so disinfecting of the floor is going to happen after this is over. Oh my god, and it's so cold too. Like, who gave raw meat the right to be so freaking cold? I feel like one egg is not enough for these two pounds of ground beef to keep it together. But I mean, I guess it is like, isn't it? Oh, it's so cold, you guys. Ooh. And mix it in thoroughly as best we can, even though we did a terrible job of dicing the peppers. I don't know if I got all the breadcrumbs spread evenly either, but what can you do? Oh my god. The ears are like icicles. Oh. <laughs> okay, the next step. Stuff each pepper with meat mixture, leaving room, leaving a dome of the mixture on the top of each pepper. Okay. So, let's do that. I hope you guys can see. Um, maybe what I'll do is yeah. Oh. Hey, YouTube, making videos makes you crafty here. Look at that. I just made myself super ambidextrous. Okay. 
I don't know. I, that's probably not the right word, but anyway. I don't think these peppers are enough for all this meat. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna stuff it in there. That's what he said. And then I'm gonna put a little bit on top, like it says, put a dome. Hey, this has a little dome, doesn't it? No, oh, it says a dome. So I'm free to decide how big the dome is going to be. Since we have a lot of meat, I'm not gonna hold back. This is interesting. I've never done some, I've done stuffed peppers before, but I've never done like this. You see those like tasty videos of like people cooking eggs and pepper rings and stuff? Like, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I mean, I like pepper, I actually don't like peppers cooked. I prefer them raw by a large margin. Okay, I definitely did not dice these peppers enough. But what can you do? Yeah, if I stuff these real, real tight, then I should be able to use all the meat. Sorry for my toilet humor. I uh, have a little bit of a dirty mind. Has been that way since I was a teenager, unfortunately. Okay, how's that look, guys? Not bad, right? Not bad. Okay, so the next step. I believe we are frying them. Heat all of them in a pan, in a large oven safe pot. Oven safe pot. If you do not have an oven safe pot, you'll just transfer them to a casserole dish. Okay. I mean, I have already done this. So can I just use this? I think I'm just gonna use this. So first, let me heat up the pan. I need this one which is not oven safe, it has a plastic handle. So beware when you are cooking. Um, medium high is what it wants. So let's put it up a little bit there. Add some olive oil. Let it get nice and hot. Clean up a little bit in the meantime. My husband always tells me, oh, I just stepped on a pepper seat. I told you I'm messy. There's like four of them on the floor here. Anyway, my husband always tells me the key to cleaning up after cooking is to clean up while you're cooking. Sometimes you don't always have like the time to clean up. But right now I do because I'm waiting. So I can go ahead and put these things away. By which, in a way, I mean in the sink for cleaning later. Um, okay, so brown each stuffed pepper ring about four to five minutes on each side. So I'm gonna cook it and then flip it. Four to five minutes. May need to do this in two batches. Oh yes, most definitely. I could probably fit like maybe five of them. So maybe like seven. We'll see. Give it a try. What do you guys think? Because now commences the fun part. Now you get to see the other side of my kitchen. Hooray! Okay. Plug in. Does my poor phone. Oh god. Dad made an awful noise. I'm sure it's fine. Okay. So what I'm going to do is turn it this way and turn it down a little bit. Well, maybe I'll actually do this so you can see the pan. It's pretty hot already. This pan is hot fast. And it's on pretty high. So I'm gonna turn it down just a smidge because I fear it will burn. I'm gonna take this. Actually, I'll take the smaller one. It's a little bit easier. Because of all the chopping you gotta do. And because 
Okay. You gotta do these. Um, um, what am I saying? You gotta do these pepper rings in batches. So, um, 45 minutes each. It's like 8 to 10 minutes per batch. And then it goes in the oven for 45 minutes. So. Yeah. It's gonna be a hot minute. But don't worry, you guys don't get to do all the boring parts. You guys don't have to do boring parts. You get to watch me do the boring parts in fast motion. So you're welcome. Anyway, it looks fun. Looks half decent, doesn't it? Don't you think? Not too bad. Hmm. Probably just gonna forward, fast forward to this part. In fact, I'm probably just gonna pause it until I have to flip. So I'll see you guys in like five minutes. Okay guys, so I just flipped one just to see what it looks like on the bottom. And it's only been like two minutes, or it's only been like one minute since I paused the video. So it looks pretty good. So I just went ahead and flipped it. I'm going to do that for the others, especially the ones in the center, because those ones are going to get some more direct heat. Ooh, look at that one. That's nice and brown. Ooh, looking good. Let me move this over a little bit. I have a tendency to want to push it away from the edge. So, the ones that are on the farther edge don't get as much heat. So, obviously, because these are round, I'm going to have to uh, flip them. Or like move them around a little bit before they go into the casserole dish. Which, by the way, I figured out why we need a casserole dish. It's because once we uh, finish frying these up, we pour this baby over it. And if we use just that regular uh, sheet pan over there, it's not going to be a good time. So I'm going to go ahead and use a casserole dish and it's going to be good. It smells amazing to you guys. I don't like ground beef. Do you love ground beef as much as I do? Probably don't, but I, I love it. Okay. Oh, it's like popping up top a little bit. Turn this one on its side a little bit. So guys, today I watched <coughs> Our time multitasking. Okay. So today I watched Cats. Um, because you know, maybe you don't know, but Andrew Lloyd Webber, because of the coronavirus pandemic, has been um, quote unquote live streaming pre recorded versions of his most famous musicals. So he already did like Jesus Christ Superstar and um, Phantom of the Opera and Love Never Dies. And this week, they're doing, or they did, or they are doing, I guess, because they're still doing it right now. They may not be doing it by the time I upload this video, but they were doing cats. And so, my story with cats is like kind of weird. I'm going out the door. I'm going to go get them. I'll be right back. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. That was the package. Um, okay, so what's happening here? Why does this look not good anymore? It's because I moved it around. That's what happened. Okay, wait, was it back here? Kind of. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so these seem to be hot ready. Um, yeah, they look pretty good. They're a little pink on some parts, but I'm not gonna be too busy about it. I'm gonna go ahead and slide those into the casserole dish. This one is fine. There you go, I guess. This one. I'm not gonna be able to get that back in. It's like playing that peg toy game when you're a little kid. Alright, let me get this guy out first. Still got a lot of paint, but you know what? I don't care that much. Alright, I'm gonna take this. See if I can get it back in there. Just uh yeah, okay, yeah, I managed to make it work, you guys. 
Good job, me. Ta-da! I'm gonna get the fill. Isn't that a shame? Let's take the extra bit of fill. Add some more oil. Glaze that pan a little bit. Not that it helps because I'm not making it, but you know. Put the last five in. I'm really hoping we can squeeze them in somehow. I don't have to dirty another casserole dish because the last thing I want is more dishes. Okay. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about cats. Okay. So while those are cooking, I'm going to talk to you about cats again. So. Um, and when I talk about cats, by the way, I'm not talking about that movie that just came out because, no, no, but, um, I am talking about the theatrical recorded, recorded theatrical, theatrical, recorded theatrical version that came out in like the nineties. I don't even know. Um, but anyway, that's the version that they put on the YouTube channel, which by the way is called the show must go on. So if you're interested in watching Andrew Lloyd Webber's musicals every week. They come out on Friday at 11 and hang around for the weekend. So, um, yeah, so it's like free musicals and it's like totally worth the entertainment. Heard weird noises. Um, but anyway, cats. So, I have seen cats before, but I feel like only in bits and pieces. And um, my parents had the cat soundtrack on CD and so every now and then I would just like put their CDs on in, in the stereo and just like have them play and um, so I recognize all the songs from cats but like I never knew what the musical was about if that makes sense and even today I was watching the musical and I was like what is this show about like who what are all these cats doing? And it's like weirdly sexual and like kind of weird, but I also kind of liked it. The music was pretty cool. So anyway, let me flip these. Hold on. Oh my gosh, this thing is like going through some stuff here. There we go. Okay, much better. So let's flip these guys. Looking good. Tasty. I kind of want to eat them now, but I know they're not cooked, so I'm not going. Alright. So, um, back to cats. What was I saying? I think I was talking about watching it. I was talking about watching it today, right? So, I watched it today and I didn't know what I was watching. I had to put subtitles on because, like, half the first, like, five minutes is, like, whispering. And I'm like, I can't. I'm, like, half deaf. I can't hear what you guys are saying. So, I put the subtitles on. And that made everything a lot clearer because it actually tells you which cats are coming on stage when they come on stage, which is pretty cool. Um, so anyway, like three quarters of the way through, I like finally gave up and I was like, I don't know what's going on. Let me Google this. So I Googled it. And if you don't know what cats is about, it's basically like this bunch of cats gather in the junkyard and they each have their own solo like well not really a solo because everybody knew, but you know they each have their own song um introducing themselves and like explaining why they're the cat to ascend to the cat heaven which is called i forget what it's called something weird like heavy heavy load heaven or something. i don't know it's like weird but and if you're a cat's family don't be mad at me because like surely you understand that this is everybody's response to cats um but anyway they want to go to this heaven so that they can be reborn into a younger cat like well all right if you want to die for a new life like i don't know it's kind of weird but uh yeah i'm not gonna 
I'm gonna judge it too much because the music is cool, the dancing is cool, the costumes are interesting, but I can see why it's a classic musical with lots of um, awards behind its back. Or in its, in its toolbox, like what you say, under its belt. I definitely can't multitask, you guys. <laughs> These videos might not be that interesting for you. Anyway, um, so yeah, so I looked up the premise of Cats and that's what it was and I was like, I mean, that makes sense, but also why? But it's okay. It was entertaining. My husband watched it with me. He was like, I don't know what you're watching right now because it's ridiculous and weird. But it's all good. Cats is not for everybody, and that is certainly something that even Cats fans acknowledge. But honestly, if you haven't seen it, you should really, like, give it a try, because it's pretty cool. Especially, I mean, if you like musicals, you've probably seen it. There's probably no way, because it's one of the most classic musicals in all of history. But, like, if you're interested in musicals, then you might like it. Who knows? Alright, ooh, yeah, these are getting nice and brown. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Try and squeeze these guys in here. So I have this problem when I watch a musical is that I get a song stuck in my head. And I sing it for like the entire week until I watch the next musical. <laughs> so what was my poor husband? Ugh. Come on, I'm gonna fit them all in here if I can. I don't think this is going to happen, you guys. I really don't want to use another casserole dish. Ugh. Yeah, I really don't think I'm going to put that last one in there. That is such a bar. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Help me out here. I'm going to take this off. Yeah, oops. The last thing you want is a hot pan to fall off the stove onto your foot. Okay, I think I have no choice but to use two casserole dishes. So luckily I have two. Instead of using a full-size casserole dish, you can use this little one, which is weirdly dusty, so I'm going to rinse that off. Okay, so this is not how over here, so I can put this here. So anyway, as I was saying, with cats, I mean with musicals, I always end up singing the songs over and over again. But I haven't really done that yet with cats, because... Um, I don't really know the lyrics to the cat songs, I'm being totally honest. So I'm going to go ahead and put four in here, just to make it worth my time. I'll spread the rest of these guys out. Um, but yeah, I definitely have the Jellicle song stuck in my head, like the initial Jellicle song, which is fun. So let me get this covered really quickly. Waste not, want not. Is that not what they say? Okay. So now the next step is poor crushed tomatoes and stuffed pepper rings. Bake at 350 for 35 to 45 minutes. Top the cheese and bake for five more minutes. Easy peasy. So all in all, this is not really a bad recipe. Like once you get all the stuff chopped, like if you can hire somebody to chop stuff for you, like by all means, do that because chopping is super annoying and it's my least favorite thing also have a bad habit of not putting things away when I use them, so I'm gonna um, try and do that more. Hello, excuse me, can you please? Oh, I like chucky super fun. Okay, I'm just gonna have this thing later. Pour over, ooh, it's so gloppy. Do, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't look nice, but it doesn't have to look nice, right? I'll just spread a little bit of that to get it sauce around. So now I'm going to go ahead and put those in the oven, which is, you probably can't tell, so that's great. I clean it with baking soda, but it leaves like a baking soda kind of like residue. So it doesn't look great, but it's clean. Kind of. Alright, put that in there. And then it goes in for 35 to 45 minutes. Okay, put it on for 35 minutes to start with. And it is done when... It does not say when it's done. But I will stick a thermometer in there. 
at 35 minutes and see where it's at temperature wise it should be 165 i think for mincemeat so i'll check back with you in 35 minutes <laughs> bye okay guys so the timer just went off i put it on for 35 minutes i'm gonna take it out and check if it's um done got my handy dandy oven mitts don't you love that they're not the same style Tomato sauce is certainly hot, that's for sure. On top of that's a little black. Check with my meat thermometer here. Wait for it to set and do the big one first. I think we might be in business. It does have to go in for five minutes after this. If I put some cheese on it, but it's at 157 now, this big one is. 159. Yeah, so I think five more minutes in the oven should be okay. Oh, this one's hotter. Okay. So, oh no, that's the one that came out. All right, so they seem pretty good. So I'm going to take the other one out and sprinkle some cheese on top. Look at all the blackened on top. I'm not a huge fan of that, but we'll be fine. By the way, these videos are not sponsored by any particular product, so if you see something I'm using in a particular brand, then uh, don't think I'm trying to advertise to you because it's just what I had or was able to get at the store. So I'm going to sprinkle some cheese. I like to go ham on cheese because why not? Cheese is the best. We are in business. It's not like a super thick layer of cheese, but it's a good enough layer, I think. It's a whole bag of cheese, ain't that fun? Alright, now these go back in the oven for five more minutes. And I'll see you in five more minutes. Okay, you guys, so the five minutes is up. I actually gave it two extra minutes so it can maybe brown a little bit, get a little crispy on top, because I love me some crispy cheese. Um, so now I'm going to take it out. I don't think it's as crispy as I would have wanted it to be, but I'm hungry and I don't want to wait anymore, so I'm going to open it up. Oh, baby, that looks cheesy. Ooh, that is hard to love it. Are you guys ready for the grand reveal? Here we go. Look at that. Those look pretty good, right? Not bad. Not bad. The only thing I don't like is that it's kind of like swimming in tomato sauce. It's not really my favorite thing. I don't love tomato sauce. But I say, all in all, this is a pretty successful and reliable recipe so if you want to give it a try i'll post the link below and you can let me know how it goes for you hey guys so we just finished eating those uh stuffed pepper rings or whatever they're called mini meatloaf pepper rings or whatever um and they were actually pretty good um i think that they're sort of incongruous with each other like you don't really need the pepper rings they don't really stick together well it's kind of like eating a giant meatball with the pepper ring but the flavors were pretty good my husband said he really liked the seasoning even though i thought it was a little under seasoned to be honest if you like strong seasoning or if you really like creole seasoning um i'd recommend maybe putting a little more in there but otherwise yeah it was pretty good i do think that it won't reheat very well we i usually make enough for the two because we're only two people so we don't need to make a lot of money but um i usually make enough for two nights worth of meals meals two nights worth of meals there we go i can speak english i promise um and so i try to pick meals that can be reheated easily or like will sit well in the refrigerator i'm not sure how these are gonna go but um i'll try it tomorrow and and i'll put in the comments because i don't really want to make another video of this one but um i'll put in the comments on how it held up overnight in the refrigerator and let you know um, also the other thing I want to tell you is that you can probably replace the seasonings in this one. Like I felt that 
it was a very Italian dish. Like you could add um, your own tomato sauce, your own pasta sauce. You could even use pasta sauce instead of the crushed tomatoes. That might actually taste better because crushed tomatoes are just kind of like tomato as opposed to something flavored. So if you make a sauce or if you have a jarred sauce, you might like that a little better. Um, I might also add some more cheese because I love cheese and it doesn't hurt to add lots of cheese to something unless you're trying to eat healthy, in which case no. But um, also if you're thinking of eating healthy or if you're going keto or low carb or whatever, this is a great recipe because it doesn't have any um, simple carbohydrates in it. It's just uh, vegetables and meat. So if you're going low carb, then this is probably a great recipe for you. Otherwise, I think that's about it. And I think my dog is about to make an appearance. Hey, Selma. Hey, I oh, you got her ears. There she is. There she is. Yeah, isn't she cute? Okay, so I think that's about it about the meatloaf pepper rings. So if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you guys give it a try and see how it goes for you. Until the next video, see you next time. I'm Dahlia. Everything's fine. Okay. And I'm gonna start with prepare clip clip. Happy pepe pepe pepe.